Hey, what's up, Liron here. I want to share with you my biggest number one advice for beginners in watercolor. Uh, we're going to paint together this beautiful dock scene, port scene from Sorrento as I'm doing this. But I'm not going to bury the lead here. Uh, my number one advice for anyone getting started in watercolor or even intermediate advanced is never trust other people's advice, myself included. Um, and there are a few little kind of crevices we can talk about when it comes to that. Um, the thing is, the problem with trust, I tr talked about it in the trust the process video, is trust is very fickle. If you trust something, you may end up being wrong. It's far more consistent to base your art and your creation in knowing rather than trusting. Um, now, here's the thing. Everyone's going to lead you astray. Uh, I'm going to lead you astray. If you follow my advice, I am going to lead you astray because I don't know you and I am not you and I will never know exactly what you want to create, how you want to create it, and all of those little nuances. So whatever I say, by definition, is probably going to be irrelevant to you. Now, I personally am trying to only speak as a matter of of facts uh, in my teaching. Uh, you know, I talk about water to paint ratio and things that are just factual. The more water, the lighter it gets. The more paint, the darker it gets, right? I'm, I'm not saying, though, you have to mix the dark value that way or this way. That's the thing I'm, I'm trying to avoid as much as I can. But if you do watch a lot of videos, not everyone does that, and I don't do it always. So um, everyone's going to lead you astray. That's the bottom line. The only person that will not lead you astray is you yourself. Um, and I think this is an interesting process to demonstrate this point for a simple reason, uh, in that I don't trust anything while I'm painting this. Um, I'm not even trusting any preconceived plans that I may have. I come to this process completely naked with just my desire to paint the scene. Um, the thing that happens to me when I do that is I have less clarity of things I want to do in advance of things, but I have all the clarity in the world because I just know. I just know what I want to do um, when I rely on that intuition. Now, I don't want to get into too much advice other than don't trust my own advice, uh, but I would love to describe to you what I'm doing here. Uh, what you see me doing here is making the most out of this paint while it's still wet. So you see I'm not moving into the water, and again, when I say that, Nothing in what I'm saying is, and that's how you should do it, okay? That's a huge, huge caveat. I'm not saying that's how you should do it. All I'm saying is, in this particular painting, I chose to really take my time with this little piece of land, and I'm not moving away from it until I'm pleased with it. Now, what are the facts? The facts are, while the paint is still wet, you can add a lot of things wet and wet and have smooth transitions. Once it dries, you can no longer do that and you'll get hard edges. That's a fact. There doesn't mean that you have to do a lot of wet and wet, doesn't mean you have to make the most out of an, an area, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with a lot of hard edges. That's how I chose to do it here because my creativity led me in that direction. It told me, keep working this area, keep working it until you're happy. And that's what I did pretty much. Uh, now, once I am happy with it, uh, it is time to start uh, moving into the blue Um and you'll see me in a second starting to paint the water, which is essentially the biggest shape and the biggest wash, so to speak, in this area. But the thing I learned with time is that there's almost always more that can be done wet and wet. Uh, and there's always a darker value that can be achieved. Um, and because watercolor fact dries lighter than it appears when it's wet, I can almost know that I can darken more than I think I should and still get the result I want. Uh, and that's pretty much what I did here. Now I'm going to start mixing some uh, light blue for the water. Uh, the thing that was important for me here, the water is, it's a clean blue, but not really clean. You'll notice I, I will make this a little bluer in a second. Um, but it's still a grayish blue, albeit a light one that gets darker as we move down. Uh, and look at how I'm treating the connection between the water and the land. This is something I like to do. I like to really let the shapes touch. And I don't know exactly to explain why, but the way I do it, it usually ends up with not too much of a running of the paint. So 
I am leaving some wide gaps that helps to make the separation in terms of just not them mixing too much. But uh, it's something about the timing and the wetness of paint. If you look at the dock uh, as opposed to the water, the moment they touch, there will be some movement, but not a lot. Um, Honestly, again, this isn't a matter of you trusting me to tell you how to do this. This is more of the only real thing you can trust is your own experience. And even then, I would say it's not a trust, it's a knowing. So I would say if you have experience, you know to fall back on your own experience. Your own experience is what leads you. And you will know how to very intuitively do these kinds of things. Um, intuition to me is pretty much everything. If I can you know, delegate everything to it, I will. Um, I think everything else in is interference, as I talked about in a recent video. Uh, anything that takes you out of the painting process is interference. It does not mean that it's wrong to have interference, by the way. You paint however you want. There's nothing wrong with having interference. The effect of having interference, things pulling you out of the painting process, the effect is the work, the result will be less you and more influenced by the interference. So if you want to, and there's no value judgment here, if you want to paint something that is really unique and really yours, not everyone wants that. If you do, um, uh, removing interference tends to take in that direction. Um, so I'm going to continue with this wash now. I am stopping myself from uh, going very dark here. Uh, because I, I just know from experience, you know, the moment I start to really darken this wash, the flow is going to get hurt majorly. And look at all the highlights I'm painting around, okay? Now, again, if I'm being fully honest, I don't have much of a plan at this stage. All I know is I want to leave a bunch of highlights for the boats and details, and so I will do that. Um, I actually quite like how rugged and messy the highlights are. Uh, that's once again a byproduct of me just delegating almost everything to intuition. Um, one thing that I that I find fascinating is um, taking a a photo or you know a subject or a, pa uh, a scene you want to paint that almost you feel like you have no idea how you will approach it, and just getting started painting it while delegating everything as I mentioned to my instincts and my intuition, uh, and seeing what happens, because to me it's a, it's also a process of discovery. Uh, what wash do I, what shapes do I connect? Where does my wash move? All of these things that are very in the moment, um, it's almost a discovery for me as well. And why is it a discovery for me, the person who actually paints these things? The reason is because I'm not the one who painted. Again, it's something I talked about in the video about the last watercolor technique you'll ever need. Um, the, the art is made through me. I'm not really the one painting it because if I were the one to paint it, I would really think about each and everything I'm doing. I would really plan and calculate and work shape by shape. But these kinds of paintings and, and a lot of other kinds of paintings are really painted by that raw intuition and come from that place where art comes from that is just unknowable. Uh, you just don't know where that is from. Um, this wash is done. Everything is dry, uh, and now it's time to start uh, adding, removing, changing, whatever. You know, whatever I see that, that feels like uh, it needs changing. Now, one of the things you'll notice is I left a lot of highlights very generously. Not all of them are going to be white. Some of them are going to be light, but not white. Uh, and so I'm, I'm making my way around the docks and the boats and the details um, and really just putting in what I see. There is no technique here. There is no. There's barely any thought. Um, in retrospect, you can look at what I'm doing and say, "Oh, I did this because of that." And I, the reason I. So, for example, one thing I'm doing here is while I have the same color, I am painting it in multiple places because that helps um, just save time and energy. Instead of mixing a, a red and then a yellow, then a blue, and then go back to red, back to blue, back to yellow, I can just use that color while I have it, right? But even that wasn't really done with much pre-planning. Um, that sense of freedom I had as I painted it, where I just enjoyed placing these colors everywhere, um, <coughs> which is another example of how something can appear to the observer as a technique when it's not really a technique, it's just something that my intuition guided me to do. And now it's time to go over the water. And the reason is the water right now as it is 
are very transparent. They feel like they're not there because they should be darker based on my vision, based on what I see in the reference photo. So this is what I'm doing. You know, you'll notice I just went ahead and painted over that dock because it's going to be darker anyway. Um, now, I'm not covering that piece of land. I'm just uh, blending the edge there because I want to save that for later. There is no real, you know, it's not the right way to do it. But I just felt like I don't want to get into the land right now. I would like to devote my attention to the water. Now, I wasn't even thinking that, to be honest with you. That's just where, again, that intuition led me. Um, you know, I heard this beautiful um, sentence from Kapil Gupta. He said, um, the thing you do best is the thing you know, not how you've done. So, the thing you do best is the thing you don't really know or can't really explain in detail, in steps, in stages, how you've done it. The more you're skilled at something, the more the natural progression is to move away from all of these pre-planned things and delegate a lot to instinct. That's where a lot of the beauty, uniqueness, and specialty, I would say, or specialness of art, personality comes from. And those are the things that I cannot explain to you exactly why I'm doing them or even how I'm doing them. Why did I choose to go there? Why did I choose to paint this? Why do I stop a wash and then decide to move on to a different area? These are things I can't tell you, oh, I was thinking about this composition and how to do this and how to do that. Now, honestly, I don't know. Like, there is no right or wrong here. It's not the right way to paint based on instinct. And I bet you a lot of the artists you see that paint hyper-realistically, they may paint based on instinct, but there's a lot of pre-planning and thought during the process. So you could say the 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 meat and potatoes of their painting process is done with a lot of conscious thought. Do I say that this is wrong? No, not at all. Again, no right or wrong here. Uh, notice how going darker here really brings out the boats and the highlights. That was the thing I was after. Um, a lot of uh, people just stop in the previous wash. To them, it looks very dark. They think it's very dark, but that's because the eyes are not as trained, and that is okay. Uh, once your eyes are trained to really recognize differences in value, differences in shapes and colors, these things will just happen as a byproduct of you understanding what you're doing, which is why, once again, it really isn't about the how-tos, it's more about understanding. The more you understand anything at all, anything at all, um, the fewer mistakes you're going to make. Now, what are mistakes? Mistakes, again, are it's not a value judgment of this was wrong, that was wrong. Mistakes are anything that moves away from your vision, the thing you intended it to look like. Um, so that's what I would say about that. Now, this wash is dried as well. Now it's time to start adding the details and the more, you know, just more specifics. Um, I add a lot of it very, uh, very gently and very kind of all over the place. But now it's time for me to... Um, start putting in some shapes that are going to be final. Um, and I really enjoy this top right section. I really like it and that little dock. Um, it allows me to work on a lot of small shapes very patiently and, and, and not, again, not out of, I'm working on them patiently. I'm not even thinking about that. The sheer experience of painting them is very fun, entertaining, loose, peaceful, and joyful to me because I'm just taking my time. Um, and so that's maybe, you know, something automatic I learned to do where there's an area I feel like I can let go a bit and really work slower um, and still maintain the fluidity I'm after. Uh, so you see there's a pretty major shadow there uh, or reflection cast by the, this mass of land. Uh, and I want to capture it. It does a few interesting things. Again, in retrospect, these aren't things I was thinking about necessarily, but it contrasts a little more nicely with those boats there. So it provides an extra dark backdrop for these uh, boats, ships, whatever it is, yachts, yes, you know, whatever the, these things are. I'm not a professional at that. Um, but it does provide that nice contrast there and then. Uh, around the edges, I'm kind of just blending those in. Now, to be honest with you, um, the only real thing right now that compositionally speaks to me as a lacking uh, is the contrast on the lower half of the painting so the entire lower half should be a little darker all of the things i'm putting right now are very trivial they're very um, 
they're very easy for me to just you know drop a few lines and shapes here and there um, barely require any any effort right none of it actually requires that much effort but in between the washes when I was looking at it and thinking okay what's not according to my vision which I do sometimes not during the painting but in between washes um, and I figured okay yeah what's what's still really off to me is that lower section so you will see me tackle that all the way towards the end I, I will do that uh, you will see it in action but it's going to be really all the way towards the end of the painting process now I'm going to take a sip of my coffee needed it um, so yeah I'm, I'm adding a bit of darks around these I don't know what you'd call these little uh, hangers whatever it is uh, but I will add a lot of these are small details for the boats just to look good these stripes really make it read more like boats the stripes and the masts that I will add later on or you know small masts um, these hangers and and everything around here I'm going to be very generous with my opaque colors uh, because I feel like there's a lot of white I want to bring back, a lot of lightness I want to bring back to the painting. Um, and it's very fun to do on top of a black background or a dark background because it feels almost, again, like painting with opaque paints. Um, it's a very different experience to watercolor and it feels like uh, it's a very... Um, quick win almost because you immediately see the effect of what you've been doing now look at how I'm interpreting this little dock there or the wave breaker I don't know what you'd call that <coughs> I'm interpreting it very loosely um, that's another part of me just kind of trusting whatever I feel like doing um, I almost enjoy just placing something there and seeing how it looks like it's almost like the entire painting is experimentation I don't know until I put the paint in if if it's going to work. So the way I treat it is I'm going to just place some stuff, see what it looks like, and then change it and figure it out. Now, I got my trusty Uniball white gel pen by Signo, S-I-G-N-O. If you do want to get uh, the same supplies as I do or you know what I'm using, I will put a link below, but it's going to be uh, freewatercolor.com forward slash gear, G-E-A-R. Uh, it will... Um, have everything I'm using. Now look at how these uh, vertical lines break off the composition in a second you'll see and make these look like ships, yachts, boats, whatever. It's a huge element of this painting. Huge. Um, now as I mentioned this, my supplies. Also if you want to learn how to paint like me or how to paint more like yourself by discovering your own freedom, check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course. I think it's my main, main thing you want to check out if you're interested in that. It goes over exactly f how to find that freedom and looseness within you. Because it exists there, it will enable you to do any type of process, whether it's highly detailed and realistic. That freedom can be found anywhere. So feel free to check that out, a frustration-free watercolor course. If you want to better understand realism, check out the watercolor realism course. I will put links to everything in the description box below i will mention i have received and look at these beautiful lines all of these opaque brush marks they're just so fun it's such a quick win look at all these dots feel like reflections and and bo boys you know however you pronounce that the floaty things uh, it's just fun it's just great great fun um I did get a couple of very nice messages from people who bought my How to Sketch book and my How to Shade book, which I barely talk about, but check those out if you want to. Um, if you're struggling with shading, you can check that out as well. All on Amazon links below. Uh, but I guess, yeah, I, I do want to thank everyone who purchases that. Um, and now we're going to move on to the opaque shapes on these hangers to the right. Again, I'm not shying away from just using the paint right out from the tube, the designer's gouache, look at that, just tons of opaque shapes. Honestly, who cares, you know, like, I'm not married to watercolor, it's just a medium I enjoy using the most, but if I need a certain result, I'm going to use whatever I have at my disposal. I'm freely mixing here some yellow with that white paint, I'm just going to use whatever I have, honestly, and I think there's a lot of fun in not necessarily getting each and every specific little art supply you see and you think you need. Look at this beautiful blue opaque paint. But rather seeing how you can create the effect you want with the colors you or tools you already have. I find a lot of pleasure in that. Now I felt like one thing that was missing was a few strong color contrasts. So here we go with that red. 
especially the red that's kind of something i like uh adding in these scenes uh it works really well in large scale you know i already signed this but of course there are some corrections i, I completely didn't put in the rooftop for the that building the details there that I do want to include. Uh, I would say this process is a perfect representation of what it looks like to just work freely, let the intuition take over. What you will get is not necessarily the most objectively accurate painting, but you'll get the most accurate painting to who you are and what you're trying to achieve. And to me, that's the highest aspiration. Can I make the perfect painting that is just completely clean, painted coming directly from the place art comes from with zero interference from me on my part. Uh, and that is exactly what I got here, which is why when I look at this painting, even though there are so many weird quirks to it, that's actually the point. It feels perfect to me. I don't even know if I would change anything, honestly. It just looks so good. Uh, one thing that at this point I will change, of course, is the lower background. I told you it's going to be darker around the bottom. You will see it happen in a second. It's going to make it immediately look tons better. All of these beautiful ripples as well. Just absolutely love this one. Um, when a painting is truly yours, it's truly yours. And some of you may experience this when you spend too much time following tutorials. I don't know if you can relate. At some point, it's depressing. You may not feel like you're... Here we go. We go darker now at the bottom. Uh, at some point, it may feel like I'm just not doing anything creative. I'm following tutorials. It's. I felt it for sure. It was just depressing. The way out is to paint your own artworks. Make them your own. Your own imperfect, personalized beautiful, like your own personalized handwriting artwork. That's, to me, the epitome of fun and creation. Um, don't worry, I'm going to charge a bit of dark paint there. You'll see in a second this is going to be beautiful. And the effect of the ripples, look at that. Just placing those in. Some of the paint is still wet, some of it is dry. But look at the beauty it creates and the feeling of waves leaving the shore and moving towards the boats. Uh, to me, this is the perfect painting absolutely love it. I hope you enjoyed the process. I want to take this opportunity to send huge thanks to anyone who supports me over on Patreon. You're a huge part of what I'm doing and you really allow me to post tons of content for you. I'm going to be honest with you, it's a challenging time. Um, it's very hard to find the creativity. Uh, so whenever I find it, I just wholeheartedly grab it by the horns because I can spend, you know, whole days and weeks just not feeling like wanting to do anything. So Thank you so, so much for that. I really appreciate it. Any video you see is when that inspiration does strike. So I'm grateful that it does come. Uh, but in any case, thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do everything else to help this video find more, um, more views and more people that it's relevant to. And I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.